What's up, y'all? I'm the guy behind the brush. Just wanted to say hi. What's up, you guys? I'm Jason J. Epperson, the guy that was just there you seen. And I'm going to kind of, I guess, uh, walk you through this. This is going to be a really short, sweet, simple piece. And when I say sweet, it did turn out pretty dang cool. So on this thing right here, three simple colors. Red, uh, apple reds to be more specific. Black and ivory white. The yellow was just more of a like um, uh, something to tint the the ivory white, and I really kind of decided against it when I was halfway through using it. So when I got going with the painting, I was like, ah, screw the yellow. So three three colors is really all you really need. Keep that in mind. So typically when I get going with paintings, I really wing it. I do the stuff this stuff right off the top of my head. Uh, so you know it's it's kind of hit and miss when it, when it comes to colors that I'm gonna use. I don't pre-plan. I just go to town, and things just happen. I guess you could say. Okay, I could tell you about how I do stuff all night long, or I could just jump right into this thing. I'm gonna tell you about the red sun real fast that you just witnessed me make. All right, now ignore the yellow once again. The tint is not apparent. I decided against it. So we're gonna go red, white, black. Those three colors. Those are the only colors you need to worry about make the center circle don't make it clean because you're you're later on what you're going to do is you're going to bring some trees in front of it and the foliage is going to kind of hide all the imperfections you want to go through make the lines as even and straight as possible okay uh what i do is i kind of like start with the center point at the top and i make uh make sure that the two uh lines are are, are perpendicular uh to one another yet fan out they they fan out and are uh, thin towards the sun itself, the center sphere. And so they go some thin to wide, okay? All the way around, and you want the even amount of uh, lines all the way around, those are the rays, okay? Even lines all the way around. Drag them all the way out, make, some, make one side dark, make one side light. Remember that, because it's important that you uh, make a, a three-dimensional effect. Then you come through, you want to cap it, and you want to kind of spray some black around that again, and then you're going to come through with the landmass, okay? You're going to just spray, spray red all the way across the bottom. You want to cap it with black. Cap it with black, then you take magazine paper, you want to run your finger down the top of it, okay? You want to do that. That way, you can actually get a ground effect, get your texture in place, and you want to pull as you, as you run your finger. Pull as you run your finger. Now, that said, uh, you're, you want to make it... Uh, the correct depth so you're gonna want to do that uh, multiple times so you're gonna do it once twice you know re layer black a little lower and then you also want to really you want to kind of throw some white in the mix to kind of throw it in there and make it look like a mist in between the different layers of depth landmass for the foreground so it makes it look depthy okay so you're gonna do that once twice three times maybe four times and you're gonna get what you see here then you're gonna go ahead and bring a little medium-sized lineal brush. You're gonna run some uh, trees all the way up, make them nice and uneven and imperfect, and you're gonna make some branches, make it thin out towards the top, okay? Make sure they are the contrast is right, so they're even, perpendicular to one another-ish, okay? Palette knife scraping, okay? You wanna go ahead and smear the, the, the wood, the bark itself, okay, while the paint is wet, and then you wanna scrape down one edge not all the way down one edge. You want to kind of like break it up a little bit here and there, and you want to kind of like make sure you hit all the branches a little bit here and there, okay? Make your judgment call. But when you do that, you're going to give it a light edge, and you're going to smear the paint itself, and you're going to make it look more realistic, okay? Once you get that, you're going to go ahead and make some little ground effects, some rocks, scrape the rocks in there, so make some blades of grass with your, with your palette knife tip. Okay, you can just cut right into the paint. Don't cut the canvas, don't push too hard. You'll cut the canvas, okay? So lightly just kind of bring it down to the canvas surface is all I'm saying. And then you're gonna throw a little bit of black in there, kind of like throw, uh, make, make sure, make sure, you know, you can sponge it, you can you can uh, uh, texturize it again with uh, magazine paper, you can do all kinds of things, okay? After that, we're gonna go ahead and use a natural sponge, dip it black back in black, and you're gonna make your foliage on each tip of the branches this way, okay? You can make it however you want, lightly. I suggest do it light, don't do it too much. If you overwhelm the painting with foliage, then you're gonna overwhelm the painting in general. You want good contrast, which means that you wanna make it e uh, you know, even, all the way, a good flow, a uh, good feng shui, uh, I guess you could call it. Now, this is uh, uh, Red Sun, of course, as we said, so you just see the foliage, it kind of broke up the unperfect Red Sun, outer lined the black outer edge, and bam, thank you, done deal. Sign it, you're done. It's quite literally that easy, you guys. 
because it's that easy. That's why I had to run through this to tell you about it. So enjoy. Good luck. And uh, I hope you guys make something just as sweet. If you do, I want to see it. Show me. Peace out, y'all. Later.